How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool kind of surreal landscape here. Now this is going to be done in cycles, specifically for this sunset here. It's only compatible in cycles. Today's video is sponsored by Sketchfab. If you want to sell assets, buy assets, they have an incredible store. Go check them out. It's really cool. Linked in the description. If you want to get this project file right here, it's available in the description for a dollar. Uh, besides this character right here, I don't own the rights to that character. Everybody on Patreon, you'll be getting that for free. If you don't know about the Patreon, you get all the project files for the tutorials, as well as exclusive tutorials. I show my client work. I just dropped a pack of 50 looping animations, all the project files for those animations. And I have the iridescent procedural material pack, the glitch pack, and I just released the procedural wood material pack. So if you want to get all that stuff, it's available in the description. All right, so we're just going to go to file, new, and just get general here and don't save. All right, so what I'm gonna do is shift A and we're gonna go ahead and get a plane. I'm gonna hit S8 just for a, give it a nice size and then control A, apply the scale. I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, right click and click subdivide. And then right here in this little drop down, I'm gonna give it a hundred cuts just like that. And now we have our plane. I'm gonna go ahead into the modifiers and I'm gonna add in a subdivision surface and then a displace. I'm going to click a new displacement, click on this little icon right here to go to the texture. And we're going to go on, a, we're going to go on over to say a cloud texture, bring the uh, depth down to zero, bring your scale to something like this. And then what we're going to do is come down here to colors and then click on color ramp. And we're going to be able, we're, what, what we want to do is make some divots in our plane here so we can make, so we can make that water come in. So I'm think it's going to be the, uh, yes. So bring in the white portion just like this. And this is where we're gonna make some water. Shift A, add a plane, hit S8 to match the scale, and then just bring it up. And we're gonna be adding a water texture to this right here. But if you can see, we're gonna have our camera angle like this. So this water is gonna be coming in like that. Uh, we're gonna edit this um, ground texture to work so that we can see the water later. All right, so let's click on the displaced plane and I'm gonna right click and shade smooth. And really, that's all we're gonna need. You can kind of see how it's low poly, but that's not gonna be a problem once we add an our procedural texture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set up my camera angle now. I'd like to do that first just to see how it's all gonna look. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, get my camera. I'm gonna hit Control Alt Zero to snap that to view. Now, right now, if you click on this little green camera icon, your focal length is at 50 millimeter. That's, that's replicating a 50 millimeter lens. We wanna have a wide angle lens, so we're gonna go with a 35 millimeter lens. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit G, kinda bring it down, um, something like this, maybe bring it in a little bit more. I like that, we could, we're gonna get some nice water coming into the view, just like that. And then I'm gonna hit G to bring it down a little bit more, and I'm gonna hit R twice, to make him kind of look up a little bit. So that's really nice. We have our scene here. All right, now we're gonna make that sunset. So head on over to your cycles preview. We're gonna click on the world icon, click right here on color, click that, and we're gonna do sky texture. This is kind of an underused thing in Blender. I usually use it just to get some subtle reflections, but in this case, it makes a really nice, simple sunset that's very um, editable. So if you take this right here, you can edit where the sun is shining. So if you bring it over here, you get that sunset. So I'm gonna, once you start bringing it down, it'll kind of switch on over to a sunset. And then I'm gonna bring my strength up to 10. Right now that's super, super bright, but we're gonna be, uh, we're gonna work with it. And then say I bring it down some more. Now you have that sunset. It's kind of, you can almost make like a Tatooine if you really wanted to. What we're gonna do is start shading this. We're gonna just do some very simple texturing. So we're going over to shading, hit zero to go to your camera view. And I'm, I'm gonna hop on over to my material preview and uh, on the displaced texture. Now on the displaced plane, we're gonna click new and then I'm gonna give it kind of the, a reddish purple tone, kind of like I did on one of my other landscapes. For alien kind of landscapes, I do like this color. It just works really well. And then I'm gonna bring the, uh, bring it kind of dark. And then we're gonna get a bump node right here. And we're gonna plug this bump node into the normal. And we're gonna get a noise texture just to give it just a little bit of uh, character so it's not a perfectly smooth uh, surface. We're gonna bring the detail all the way up and bring the scale all the way up, bring the strength down a little bit. Um, again, just to give it a little bit of character. That's all we're gonna need to do for this because it's gonna be a fairly low light render, so we're not gonna need to communicate a whole lot of detail. Now, now let's do the same thing on this water, but do a little bit different thing with the noise texture. So we're gonna highlight these two guys right here, hit Control C, we're gonna click this, click New, now hit Control V, and then plug the bump into the normal. So what we're gonna do is bring we're gonna bring a transmission up to give it that water. 
bring the roughness all the way down, and then bring the detail down to zero, and then bring the scale kind of how you want. If you bring the strength up, it makes it like a really big ripples. We can bring it down to something like this, and then maybe bring down the scale. And now we have our water. If you check it out, now we have this really nice sunset kind of water landscape. All right, now let's go ahead and add in our uh, big sort of alien kind of sphere and give it that really cool texture. So shift A, we're gonna add in an icosphere. We're gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, right click, subdivide. We're gonna give smoothness up to one and then we'll bring the number of cuts up to 10. Now let's bring this up, right click, shade smooth and we'll bring him to be right, maybe that big and make him just so that he's kind of touching the ground. That's all we need to do. Now let's shade him, so go up to shading. We're gonna do this really cool iridescent shader. I do have a tutorial on an iridescent shader, but we're gonna kind of distort it a little bit here. So let's click new. We're gonna get a color ramp. And then let's plug the color into the color here. Change RGB to HSV, near to far. And then we're gonna take this and uh, make it purple. And so now you can see it's making this weird gradient. Let's make this one over here uh, pretty much the same purple to give it that whole range of the uh, rainbow. Now let's get a layer weight right here and give it facing right here. And now we get that weird, terrible looking iridescent shader. Let's make it metallic to give it a little bit more life. And now we are going to distort it with a musgrave texture. So MUS musgrave texture. And we need to get a mix RGB right here. Plug that there and plug the musgrave texture into here. Now we're gonna distort it. All right, I'm gonna bring it here so we can only see how the Musgrave texture is manipulating this color ramp. I run my dimension down to zero and my detail up. So now we get all this. So now what we're gonna do is bring the factor to zero and just sort of slowly bring it in and that's all we're gonna need to do, right there. And then we can play with the blend if you like to see what kind of uh, iridescent you want. All right, so I'm gonna bring it something like that. Let's check it out how it see looks in cycles. All right. Looks super cool and weird and ominous. Now what I'm gonna do is just for composition, I'm gonna make them trail up this way to kind of bring your eyes up. I do wanna bring my camera to kind of look up a little bit. That looks good. Now I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate it. Do that. Make one more, Shift D. So that's what we're doing just for just a more interesting composition like that. Okay, cool, looks great. Let's see how it looks in the cycles preview already looking really cool. Now let's go ahead and get a character. If you've seen a lot of my environment tutorials, you know that we are going to Mixamo. It is, in my opinion, one of the best free character apps. If you've never heard of it, it is a free service provided by Adobe. You do not need to make a paid Adobe account, just a free one. And then you can go and pick a character. So let's hop on over to characters. And for this specific one, I found this re really cool alien um, to be really, really cool. So this one right here, uh, Zlorp or something like that. I probably mispronounced it. I'm gonna click use this character. Now what I found is really cool about him is you can't really tell here, but these little stripes are emissive and we're gonna make them even more emissive in our render to make it look really unique. Now let's head over to animations and I'm just gonna type in idle because I don't really want him moving. This is gonna be a still render. So I just want a, a simple pose of him looking up. That's all I need. Not even looking up, just looking straight. Let's actually get this one right here. He's sort of happy idle with him, with him kind of looking up, which is what we want. And then we can go ahead and pick kind of what pose we want in there, which is really cool. Now I'm gonna download it, keep it at the default, everything, FBX, 30 frames a second, whatever, and download it. All right, I'm gonna go back to layout and then I'm gonna go to file, import. We're gonna go right here to FBX. I'm gonna click desktop where I saved it and you can see happy idle, double click that and you have your character. Let's wait a second for it to import. And I'm gonna hit, uh, all right, now I'm gonna go over here. If you wanna move them around, make sure you click on this armature. You can see it right here. And all the things are parented under the armature. So keep that in mind. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, bring him so his feet are just touching the edge. And then I'm going to uh, bring him around like this and then scale him down because these guys are supposed to be really big. And then bring it to right about, right about here looks really cool. And I like this pose how he is now, but we can kind of cycle through kind of happy looking, maybe kind of confused right there. And if I just go to hit render to see how it looks in my preview, this is how we're looking so far. I like it a lot. I want to mess with my uh, sun here. I mess with my environment here. Maybe make it a little bit darker. Maybe kind of bring it over here some. 
right, that's looking really good. Now, what I'm gonna do is something that's gonna probably tax your computer quite a lot. So this is an optional thing. You don't have to do it. I'm using RTX GPUs. So if you if your computer doesn't work well with um, cycles volume, you don't have to do this. But this really helps the atmosphere. And most of your computers can, if you do have an NVIDIA graphics card, you should be fine. So what I'm gonna do is hit, I'm gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna add in a cube here and I'm gonna scale them way up to fill up my scene. I'm gonna hit Shift A, apply scale. And then I'm gonna go to shading, click new. I'm gonna delete this principled and we're gonna add in a, a principled volume right here. And then bring it right there to the surface and I'm gonna give it a density of 0.01. And then now let's go and see how it looks in the preview. All right, I messed up. You actually need to put the principled volume into this, this volume socket here. Now, right now, you can kind of not, you can't really see what's going on. So I'm gonna get a zip density of 0 0.03 might do something. Let's go 0 0.05. All right, now it's really starting to look a little bit better. What it does is it just kind of makes a sunset and everything kind of meld together. And it gives it a very subtle, kind of hard to see um, ambience, but it works. I'm gonna give it a strength of 30 on our, actually maybe 20 on our sunset here. And that's looking really, really cool. I'm gonna go back to layout and I want to make this guy much bigger because he's not filling up the scene enough and I want him to be really, really big um, to kind of fill up the scene. And then we're gonna go over here, hit G to move them like that. And then I'll go to my camera and I'll just bring this up a little bit. Looks good. All right, so we're almost done. I'm gonna click on my character here and go to shading. And what I wanna do is mess with how bright his material is. There is an emissive portion of his body and we're gonna manipulate that. And so that's this guy right here. You can see it's plugged into the emission of this principled. So what I'm gonna do is add in this little hack. We're gonna get a brightness contrast node and we're gonna bring up the brightness, which really ruins it. And then to bring back that dark part, we're gonna bring up the contrast and that makes your emission very bright. You can mess with that, so you have to make sure, however bright you make it, you need to contrast it with some darkness. Now, if we go to the render, you can see it's noticeably brighter, which is what we're gonna go for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this, Control C, I'm gonna go right here to slot two so we can get this part, and then we'll take this guy, bring him all the way down, I'm gonna hit Control V, and then plug that right there, that makes that much brighter. So that's all we have to do here to make it brighter. We kind of improved the look and made him stand out a little bit more. Now the last thing I wanna do here is add in a little bit of storytelling that connects these things together. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit this guy, Shift D and bring it over here and then make sure it is in front of our character like that. And then I'm gonna scale it down. So we'll bring it here, Shift D, Shift D, and then we'll make this one the biggest one, this one mid-size right here. But you wanna make sure that they are noticeably smaller than each other, and then bring that there. And so that gives a little bit of storytelling. And so right, so as you can see, the big one's the middle, then we go smaller, smaller, big one in the middle, smaller, smaller, smaller. So you wanna keep that kind of composition going. So what I'm gonna do is add an emissive material to each. So delete that, new, We'll go to emission right here and we'll give it a strength of 100 and we'll give it a blue color just like this. And then if you click on this one, hold shift, this one and then this one, hit control L and click materials. It assigns all those materials together. It looks really, really cool. Render view, we'll see how that's going. I really like it. All right, I just changed the density on my uh, volume here to 0 0.1. I do want it to be a bit thicker. Let's go and bring our world brightness to 30. And then that's looking a little bit better. Uh, the density is just giving it that that atmosphere. And I wanted to give it a little bit more of that to sort of conflict with the uh, the sunset here, just to make it look better and brings out this, this glow. All right, so I'm gonna teach you a really quick trick here to make these guys glow with a cycles preview. Because if you're an Eevee, these guys are glowing, but in cycles, they don't glow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to this little printer icon and bring my percent to 50, just 50%, keep everything at the default settings here. We're just gonna do a really, really quick render to set up this compositing. So render your image and we'll come back 
let's head over and over to compositing. If you've never done this, what, what you're going to want to do is click click nodes, click use nodes, and then search VIE. Click viewer so we can see what's going on here in the background. Now you can see it. What I'm going to do is add in a glare node. Get in the glare node, plug that there. And then right now it's doing streaks. Change it from streaks to fog glow. And now you get this glowing look. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this guy, shift D and do it again so that we have um, a more obvious glow. Now that we have this, it is kind of a noisy image if you zoom in. We want to fix that. So what I'm going to do is click on this little icon right here. looks like a bunch of photos. Click denoising data. And we're getting a lot of cool stuff here. I'm going to hit shift A and get denoise. Plug that here into the compositing. And you can see it already knocks out that noise, but it does a very bad job of it. So we need to use these new settings we got with this denoising data. So click noisy image. Bring that there to image. Um, noisy normal. And the denoising, and the denoising albedo. Now that we have all that stuff, make sure these are plugged into the right sockets. We're going to layout. I'm going to go right up here, give it 100% on my 1920 by 1080 render. I'm going to click my camera and just bring it over a little bit to help out with the composition. And then um, click on the camera icon, and I'm going to give it 500 samples. You can even go down to 300. Those are all acceptable, but I like 500, kind of clears up a little bit more of that noise, but 300 is also a really good number for this as well. Render, render image, and you will be done. All right, once you finish your final render here, just make sure that you bring all your composite settings here into the last composite node. And this is what I have as my final render. It's looking really good, I really like it. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something.